amongst horses. And I let them have a little coffee, so they're really nice. <laughs> they do a lot of toe this time. They all do. But I think it's, it's yeah. all the supplements. Oh, yeah, they're healthy and it's, it's springtime and everybody's amped up the road. So, Miss Allison. Yes. How long have you been a farrier? I have been a farrier since, uh, well, I went to horseshoeing school in 2016. Um, I was in horseshoeing school for eight weeks, and then I came out and I started serving an apprenticeship. So, it's been about six years. Okay. So, what was your inspiration to get into this field? Um, I used to be a bartender, and I had a regular client of mine one day tell me that you know I should I should try to find a job that I would do even if I didn't get paid and at the time I thought what a silly concept of course I want to get paid but then the more I thought about it the more I thought you know you might be onto something there and um, and if I could do something that I didn't get paid for I would just hang out with horses all day long and um, I had always been interested in metalworking. I had actually looked into some um, jobs doing welding. So it all just kind of came together at once. Just kind of like this brilliant idea, a light bulb went off over my head one day and said, of course, this is the answer. And so I looked into going to horseshoeing school and I found a school that I could afford and I went and I absolutely just loved it. It was unlike anything else I'd ever done in my life. Um, it was more difficult than anything I'd ever done in my life. And I just fell in love with it. And I knew it was for me. Do you have, is this a, a Monday through Friday, nine to five kind of job? This is a Monday through Saturday. <laughs> uh, I wouldn't say nine to five. I do try to get started at nine. Usually my first appointment is anywhere between 9 and 10 o'clock in the morning, but I am usually done by 3 o'clock. Um, I think it could be as much as you want it to be. It's more about what your body can handle and what part of the day you like to work in. So I do know some folks who don't start working until the afternoon they kids or whatever. Um, you really can make it your own thing, however you want to do it. Now, in looking at her foot, is that white line that I'm seeing? So that is part of the hoof wall, and um, there are there are three different layers to the hoof wall, and that is one of them. It's the non-pigmented stratum that you're looking at. Now, she doesn't look like she's got like white line disease nope. beginning or anything. Nope. That's what that's we beautiful. that's what we love about you. You. Always let us know if there's anything we should remedy. Absolutely. If there's anything funky, it's good to communicate about it immediately so we can start treating it. But generally, with good hoof maintenance and a good environment in which people are looking out for any changes in the feet, we don't deal with too much nasty stuff like that. Conscientious of what goes into and around your body. Yep. I feel the same way, you know, during the um, the buggy months of the year. It's a it's a challenge because uh, you can't work on horses all day long. I uh, I want to stay healthy, and I don't want to have neurological problems as I get older. Exactly. <laughs> Shouldn't we be asking the question, why are they not doing it? Because they really do just want to please you. Oh, yeah. How many times I've gotten a change in the car? Um, crown 
for a somewhat unreasonable amount of money. Ideas, and I think that uh, you can help me figure some things out. And I'm right. pretty excited about it. Okay. I'm pretty excited about it. She does her treatment. Um, I know her husband. Yep. He's always been very good to me. I love Bob. I don't know her well. I, I met her a few times. You know, we've talked a few times. She's good. And she's very um, well known uh, in this area, so I think she must do a really good job. She does. And her husband was telling me, you know, if you reach out to her, she'll probably. Just let you ride around with her one day because she's so educated about um, anatomy. Right. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Always yeah. trying to learn more about anatomy. Um, actually, next weekend, which I'm really excited about, I'm going up to Vermont for a horse dissection clinic. Oh wow! Are you going to work on cadaver? Um. So I don't. I'm not sure how they're going to have it set up. The last time I watched this gentleman do a dissection. It was one animal, and it took him nine hours, more or less, and we didn't even get through to a lot of the, the major like muscle groups. When you say dissection, of the hoof? Of the whole entire horse. Oh my. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it takes a yeah, long time. Yeah, but if you know all the biomechanics, skeletal, muscular, all of that, yep. then you could... It kind of gets embodied, embodied knowledge, and then you look at the feet and you say, well, most likely. <laughs> That's exactly the point. That is exactly, you're, you hit the nail on the head there. A lot of people in this profession don't feel like it's their job to know any of that. And what bothers me about that, the way that I equate it, is like, are you going to take, are you going to take your vehicle to someone who doesn't understand mechanics? No. How are they going to fix it? If they don't understand how it works, oh, you know, how are they going to better? I'm going to try that. Oh, that it looks broken. That. And it's, let me YouTube that. Exactly. <laughs> and I feel I like I can fix it. if you don't know a horse's anatomy, you're doing the same thing with a living, breathing, feeling thing. And the biggest thing is that you're not doing the best thing you could for that animal. So why do it? You know, it's, it, it, it irritates me. And I'm not saying that like I know everything because that's not it at all, but I try to know as much as possible. And I'm very open to learning that I didn't know as much as I thought I did. And that's why I like to be in those learning situations. Yep. That's where you grow, it's where you're uncomfortable. Absolutely. And some people are super uh, eked out by, <laughs> by dissection. It does not bother me at all. I have no, I have no issues with um, any kind of carcasses, it's just a, it doesn't speak. Yeah. And it's a completely different thing, you know, I've had some people say, well, why can't you learn that from a textbook? No. And you can try, and if you're the kind of person who maybe is like super um, kind of creative and can, and can visualize things really clearly, maybe you can function that way. I am not. I like... The first dissection clinic I ever did is just on the lower limb, and um, I had been studying the lower limb at that time for, what, uh, probably three or four years, and it completely boggled my mind to see it three-dimensionally in front of me. Yeah. I mean, it just rocked my world.
Oh, he's, he's got a bruise. He's got a big bruise. Oh my gosh. Yeah. What the heck? He wasn't sore. No, I imagine he probably wasn't. He's got a really nice hearty foot, but it could be some of the um, rocks that are out there. Yeah, I keep picking them up, yeah. the ones that are unearthing themselves. And I don't have a whole lot of um, evidence for this particularly, but I think. Oh, that's that a mess. When it's really wet, the foot is soft, right? Yeah. I have people who are like, I pick their feet every day, and I'm like, fabulous. And they put thrush buster or whatever in there, and there's still problems. And I think, you know, a lot of it has to do with the kind of environment are they in every day, and what is the horse's general health like? Right. The same way that, like, you or I, <laughs> like, I can come into contact with something and, and not get sick from it. Um, but somebody else might come into contact with the same thing and get really sick from it. Exactly. And I think that's why we see a lot of, like, some of these really nice barns that are super, super clean, and the horses get white line disease. And it's like, well, how is that happening? Is that building up there? Exactly. 